Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Broin's Farm. I'm Logan, and today we have a ton going on. We have Frank and Steph out in the field picking, I think, pickles and cucumbers, zucchini, that kind of stuff. We have Sydney, which is my brother's wife, picking high tunnel tomatoes. And then Sammy and I are heading up to Scranton where we go to market. Today is cleanup day, so we'll be cleaning tables, helping set up things around the market, just making everything pretty. That way, when market starts within the next week, everything will be ready to go. So I'm just kind of down here now getting stuff ready. I had to get a hand broom out of the greenhouse. Wanted to show you guys what we have left, what it's looking like. All of this cabbage here, here, over here, and here is all gonna be for our late season planting. And it's not all cabbage, it's cabbage, kohlrabi, broccoli, kale, all that kind of stuff. And then over here on the side is the last of our flowers. It's all hollyhocks, which we have like a pink, like a reddish, dark pink. We have a yellow right there and a white. And he looks like a like, kind of like a dark purple. Right there. Then we have a couple sunflowers left, you can see back there. And that's all of it besides out here, which we have some of our last planting of cantaloupe, watermelon, and then in, over there in the greenhouse is pickles. Right here's the cantaloupe and watermelon. Pretty sure there's some honeydew in there as well. They're actually gonna get planted today. Once we get back, hopefully we can be back by one or two o'clock. And then right in here is some small pickles, zucchini, and cucumbers. So we just got our stand cleaned up. All these white tables right here in front of us is ours. We built the two in the back last year just to set all our supplies on, makes it so much nicer. And then this whole aisleway will be filled with farmers. Not every stand is full, but most of them are. A lot of them are from, have been there for about 30 years, but there is some new ones coming in. We're back from cleaning the market tables. Just got here to the corn maze field. And as you can see, the field is starting to now get green. In a couple weeks, it'll hopefully be solid. You won't see any of this old rye, which is actually gonna be a really nice bed for people to walk on. It's just, you can, it's hard to see from the camera, but like, you can see it's almost like a spike growing and it's just because it's so dry, we need rain so bad. And there's also sections you can tell where it lays a little bit wetter. Like over here, it's a lot thicker. And that's just because it must have laid a little bit more wet. Um, out here it's a little more sparse, but the plants are still there. They're doing good. The population looks great. It's just we need some rain to get it to grow and hopefully this will really take off. We're going on like, I think, I don't know, at least three weeks without rain. And there's not even really rain in the forecast. There's a couple chances, but for the most part, there's nothing. We're just gonna hope we get a scattered thunderstorm. And that's all, that's all we have for right now. Right here is the pumpkins. So that right there is the whole cornfield. And then here in the front section is all pumpkins. And pumpkins, I think stackers, sugar pumpkins, stuff like that. So you can see they're all coming up right out the row. There, there, there. They're doing good as well. Now right here is a couple mist. There might be something coming, or maybe that's a weed, I don't know. But again, they need rain really bad. So I don't know what we're gonna do. We're irrigating as much as we can back home, but we don't have a pond to irrigate out of out here. So I don't know if the golf course has some kind of hookup, if we can hook into or not. But if it really, if we don't get rain within the next week here, I might think about bringing some irrigation pipe out and watering this because this is very important to me. We found a baseball from the batting cage out here in the yard. I told Sammy if she can throw it from here, over top that black, it's kind of hard to see, but over top that black netting, I'll give her 20 bucks. <laughs> wow, you almost hit the net. <laughs> she took about 10 steps closer and almost hit the net that time. Oh no, you did hit the net barely. Oh yeah. 
One more time. <laughs> I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> get closer. There it is. <laughs> okay, so we just got out here to the field. And like I said, it was really dry. So we're moving the irrigation pipe. We watered all of the zucchini, cucumbers, pickles, cabbage, cauliflower. Then we watered the cantaloupe, watermelon, honeydew, and then the onions. Now we're watering our mid-season cabbage. So we're just kind of rerouting it. We already had it through these onions. We're just pulling it down out of the onions now and into this mid-season cabbage. So we'll not only get the cabbage, but also another part of the onions, which a little more water isn't gonna hurt them at all. So Sammy and Ben are out here right now and say just go i would just go here i guess we can't. why it's not, it's not gonna latch going right through here can we move it over now yeah okay so i move it now move the other one down a little bit then too a little more a little more good perfect that good there you yeah and like i should just make sure it's pulled tight good Okay, so they just picked it up. They're moving it down. So I'm gonna push it right into there. Pull, good. So that latch, boom. And then they pull it just to make sure it's secured because if it's not pulled all the way back when it gets full of pressure, it'll jerk it real fast and then it has the capability of just unlatching itself and blowing out and then we have a huge problem so that's how that works it's very very simple but you just got to make sure you're doing everything right because you don't do all this work and then have a bunch of problems and have to shut down the line and redo it like we have already experienced the season already once so while they're doing that i am going to go through the cantaloupe and watermelon and pull the rainbirds out we don't need them in there anymore so i'm going to go through Pull the rainbirds out and fill them in with this white cap or plug. I'm just gonna fill my pockets with them. And before we put the caps or rainbirds in, whatever it is, we always put WD-40 on them. Just helps them come out a little bit easier. So these are the only two tools I need. My adjustable wrench and my channel locks. As I'm going out through here, I'm noticing the crows are already getting into our watermelon look at that i mean any doesn't even, they're only not even baseball sized yet or barely baseball sized and they're already getting hammered look at that another four ruined right there ruined right there that one's okay yet but they got that one right there i mean and i'm only within the first couple of feet of the field so i'm gonna come out tomorrow morning and i'm gonna try and shoot some of the crows what the best thing you can do that we found anyway for us is shoot one or two crows and then we actually hang them from like a pole out in the middle of our field. The crows will never come back again. So I get my adjustable on there, like so. And then I'll kind of just give it one good pop and then it loosens it and I can then do it by hand. So then that's out. Now I'll grab my cap and my WD-40. Just a couple squirts. Screw that in like so. Then I'll grab my channel locks. And after I get it hand tightened, I'll go like half a turn and then like, I don't know, another quarter or maybe a half depending on how tight it is. And that's it. You don't have to really crank it down. Usually three quarters of a turn to a full turn is all you really need. came over here to mom in the garlic field. She's starting to pull some of the first garlic. It's just about ready to harvest. It's dried down enough. 
it's just it's gonna take a long time to get this all harvested all 10,000 bulbs just how she's doing it here is how it has to be done for the entire field we're looking into trying getting some kind of garlic extractor made but we just haven't got it done yet and especially when it's dry like this we have to go through with a fork first kind of loosen the soil and then we can pull it up out the rest of the way if we try and go through and just pull the garlic out the way it is what happens is we'll actually pull the garlic toes apart and then it's also it's almost not sellable so we can't do that it's going to take a lot of time but it has to be that way to do it right and then i'll obviously show the process as we're doing it but after we get it pulled then we'll take it into the top of our barn where it will sit on racks and dry out for use <laughs> for the rest Daisy. of the season <laughs> You can lay it like that way. Okay, so we got the irrigation picked up out of the tomatoes and we parked it up there by the house. The next thing we're gonna irrigate is the peppers. The only problem is they're quite a ways away. They're not real convenient to water. So we have a chance of rain tonight. We're gonna pray we get some rain and we're not gonna set it up just yet, just in case we do get rain then it would kind of be a waste. So if it doesn't rain tonight, we'll set that irrigation pipe up tomorrow. So we're just finishing up for tonight. Uh, we wanted to irrigate, but it's just too windy as you can probably hear and see. So we're gonna have to let that go. I got everything set up. All we gotta do is turn the pump on, but we'll just have to wait. If we turn it on now, what'll happen is the way that the wind is blowing, obviously all the water's gonna blow and the other side of the field isn't gonna get near the water it needs to. So it just wouldn't make much sense. From the lane right here, all the way out to the woods, we've now laid this whole line, and then we laid another whole line from here out to the woods. So that's a quarter mile from here out, actually a little over a quarter mile because you know we have to come up here and then come out. And then we have another quarter mile, so that's a half mile. Then we went back through today and picked all that up. So we're up to three quarters of a mile. Then we moved uh, a bunch of the line out there again today. So we've moved up to a quarter, uh, a whole mile of pipe now. And it's not looking like we're gonna get rain for another week. So now we're gonna have to lay about a half mile of pipe tomorrow. And so what that means is that we're gonna have and then we're gonna obviously have to pick that up back up. So that's gonna be about two miles of pipe we have laid in, I would say about a week. And if we don't get rain after tomorrow, after we lay that pipe and pick that back up, then we're gonna have to move down to the potatoes and then probably have to restart again. So basically at this point, we're just praying for rain and that's all we can do. Our pond is actually getting pretty low. We can probably irrigate one or two more times. And after that, and obviously we don't get any rain, we're gonna have to start hauling in water. Other years it's been like this and we've hauled in tractor trailer loads and obviously that costs a couple hundred bucks a load. So we hope we don't have to do that, but if worse comes to worse, that's what we'll have to do. So that's what I'm gonna call it wrap for this video. As always, thank you guys for watching and always remember it ain't much, but it's honest work.